So this is it. We are leaving the centre of Birmingham. It has been so quiet. What an amazing stop. But now we've got a three hour journey today and we're going to be staying somewhere a little bit different this week. It's going to be a great journey today with some iconic canal side sights and stories to share. Under this bridge here, old working boats would come in and unload their goods onto the trains and there's plans to make this into a residential mooring now. This is why they call Birmingham Little Venice. You will see we are going to pass so many little canals coming off. See, here's one behind me um, coming off this canal. And that is because of Thomas Telford. He redesigned this canal to make it straighter to get into Birmingham, to stop arguments among voters. And it leaves behind all these little loops that you can do, which we will come back and do example on both sides you can see as we're going past you've got two little waterways on either side on the right hand side that's called Soho's Loop but James Brindley's contour loops were still used because they provided connections to vital industries and as well as lots of loops, there appears to be quite a lot of Canada geese around these parts too. So there must have been a bridge here. You can see the brickwork in the middle ahead. And this is what it used to look like carrying the Harbourn line over the Birmingham Canal. But today it has an important job of carrying a pigeon. Up ahead is the remains of an old toll house and gauging station where boats would be weighed and measured and depending on what goods they were carrying they would have to pay a certain price. So for example if they had coal, lime or stone that would have been cheaper than if they were carrying something like a perishable or a packet. And today it looks like it's home to two more hens, with possibly lots of other little more hens on the way. So on the right hand side, that is called the old main line. But we are going to go on the new main line. Now you can go down the old main line. I think there's some sort of engineering works or something further down at the moment. So just ahead of us, that beautiful structure is the aqueduct that is on the engine arm. So if you go on the, uh, the engine arm, which is the old part of the canal, then you travel over the main line, which we are on. Then the canal goes from really interesting features to absolutely spectacular ones. Look at this. It's like a whole world built on top of this tunnel-esque bridge. Oh my goodness, look. 
Oh, wow. What a truly spectacular sight. The iron of this bridge was made by the nearby iron works at Horsley and it was named after Samuel Gorton who was a Quaker industrialist who sat on the BCN committee at the time it was constructed. So just keep saying wow, wow, wow because just look here, it's amazing to come through here on our boat. And there's not one other boat. We've not passed a boat, there's not one behind us, there's not one in front of us. It's absolutely empty on the water and I just don't understand why. And on the right hand side you can see this is Chance's Glassworks, which was one of the most important glassworks in Britain in the 19th century, manufacturing the glass panes for Crystal Palace as just an example. And this here that we're going under, this is the Stewards Aqueduct which carries the old line over the new line and is a Thomas Telfer design but it's not made out of iron like his other bridges and that's because they chose brick to save time. So I'm going to get off and walk Zeph for a while to warm up. It is me in the kitchen. This is me in the kitchen, this noise. Right, I am going to uh, walk Zeph for a while now. Oh, walk. Go on then. Big patch of ice here. Right, so Mr M is going to turn the boat round now so we're going to come down the Netherton branch and I am going to meet him before we go through the Netherton tunnel. On the bridge it says this is the direction to hell so we'll just have to see, <laughs> have to see what that's like. Right, we are about to go into the Netherton tunnel which is going to take us 45 minutes this is the longest tunnel we've done in ages. I don't believe it. I think there's a boat. We have been travelling the whole day and we haven't seen any boats. We suddenly go right to the right hand side of the tunnel because we think this boat is coming up quite close to us. It's definitely a boat. An oncoming boat can easily pass us. I mean, this is the widest canal tunnel in Britain. And actually, because it's got tow paths on either side, the horses used to tow the boats through this tunnel. So this looks like a ventilation shaft. So we'll have a look at that. Take our mind off our impending doom. Something about this tunnel is making me feel really uneasy. I don't know if it's because I read that sign on the bridge, but I just don't feel comfortable here. seem to be getting any closer.
Now I didn't realise this at the time, but afterwards I read that this tunnel is believed to be haunted by two ghosts. One of a lady in a dirty dress called the Grey Lady, and one of a policeman who was found murdered just outside this tunnel. And out of the darkness comes this pedestrian walking the towpath along the side. Nearly scared me half to death. Would you walk down through this tunnel for nearly two miles in the darkness? Let me know in the comments. It's obvious now that there is no boat coming towards us and it was the end of the tunnel the whole time. But at some points it really felt like a boat was coming towards us, that's why we kept moving to the other side. Well it doesn't look like hell out here, in fact it looks absolutely beautiful. Mind you, this dog looks a little bit like Anubis, the dog of the underworld. Oh, it's good to be back out in the light. Wow, look at all these different junctions and turn-offs. We are turning now at Windmill Junction and we are heading down to a dead end. But that is for a reason and you can see this stretch of journey in next week's vlog. How are we going to get onto this bridge? The Canal Trust really want boats to keep using this stretch of water so it doesn't get silted up and so it can be available for all in the future. So in order to do that, they offer free mooring for a whole week and really cheap facilities. So Dee, who is one of the amazing workers at the Trust, goes to try to make a gap for us so we can squeeze Alice Grace in. Wow. Okay, I'm about to do something that I just didn't ever think I'd be doing on an arrowboat. Because of the way we're moored here in the marina, I need to fill the tank up with water. But the water is there and I'm sandwiched between two boats so I'm going to be basically reeling a hose pipe full of water through the boat. Perfect. Wow, it wasn't the most relaxing experience, but it's done. Luckily, I'm right next to Liso's Park, designed and created by poet William Shenston between 1743 and 1763. It's home to the rare lesser spotted woodpecker and the rare ballerina wax cap. Now, while it's not the time of year for wax cap spotting, it could be the time of year to spot the rare and shy lesser spotted woodpecker. And then it's so hard to tell, but I think hiding between the branches and the trees, this could be it.
These waters are the liquid pages of stories told of old. Toll islands and their gauges within the centrefold. Buildings on the margins, columns up the spine of steelworks, glassworks, ironworks. Below there's coal to mine. These waters tell the stories, listen, hear them talk. Voices of past industries mixed within a squawk that opens up a chapter with a berry beak that cries, lime feathers lift it over the once thick blackened skies. The trees have claimed the tunnels, the pits are blooming well, and the story will continue for future folk to tell.